Hi guys, how you doing? How do you like my new colors on the channel? Yeah? Yeah, I thought I should switch it up a bit. Anyways, today we're going to talk about the CME futures exchange and how it manipulates the price of Bitcoin on other exchanges. I don't know why, I don't have any uh, proof of the manipulation, but this happens quite often that I can no longer say it's coincidence. But I'll only show you one example and that's the last example. Uh, uh, right now. So this was what happened on Friday on the CME futures exchange. The price ended exactly at 1300, exactly at 1300,000 uh, on Friday. But of course, on all other exchanges, life moved on as usual. And this is on Binance. This is uh, the line is the same line from the CME futures exchange uh, pri uh, chart. And as you can see, the price moved upwards up to 1300. Uh, 13,400 and then we got the bearish candle and then the price is moving the range of the 13,000 now it's actually it's 13,005 right now so the price went up and went right back down to a almost exact point to where uh, the closing time on Friday was on CME future exchange now how they are doing this I don't know why they are doing this I don't know that that's why the, the CME gaps when you get them for whatever reason the price gets back into the CM, CME gaps or closes the CME gaps or something like that. Maybe they just like doing it. I don't know. Nobody knows. But I've seen this actually pattern a lot. Like during the weekends, nothing changes. If something changes, we either one get the gap which we close later in time, or number two, we just get back to the price where the uh, the uh, uh, the CME futures closed in the ballpark so the price can uh, fill up uh, nicely and then the life moves on that's why I've been really calm every weekend for the past I don't know few months you know because every weekend I'm just thinking like nothing's gonna happen like uh, during the weekend because I know what price ended on the CME futures and then after that it's like hmm, yeah I can go do whatever because the price is gonna come back you know the few times it doesn't come back, right? Like right now, we got a CME uh, futures gap at what is that? Uh, 10 6 or something like that? 11 6? I, I don't know quite. It still haven't closed yet, but that's what I've been waiting for the closing of the CME gap. Will it close or not? I'm not sure. So, this is how the map uh, looks right now. And if we wanted to close the CME gap, we would have to fall down. 25.27 percent that's how much we have to fall on 25.27 percent and you know when you look back uh, during the 2017 bull run and all those 20 30 percent uh, corrections maybe this is the correction that we need to close the gap if we are in the bull run what do you guys think huh and this is what i'm talking about uh, the corrections can sometimes be as small as 25 percent or bigger 38 percent this one 38 percent this one again 31 percent 39 percent 40 percent and so forth 30 percent so you see maybe what we are experiencing now is that we need a correction for the price around 25 percent give or take that would close the CME gap and that would uh, enable us to move forward and uh, go higher. Break the 14,000, go up to 20,000 and then to the moon, right? If we assume that this here in February was the start of the February March, was start of the bull run, we actually didn't have any correction yet. The biggest one was here that was at 20%. Was that the correction? before uh, move to 40,000 plus I don't know maybe maybe not but if it's not here we can get a new correction down and this one can be quite large as well and the reason I think the if it drops here is because a lot of people bought right here in the accumulation zone right and for price to move higher you have to get these people again to start buying because we haven't don't have the uh, adoption yet right there is no adoption uh, uh, with normies so i know paypal just announced they're gonna allow 
people to buy and hold uh, Bitcoin in their, in their wallets. But we are still not there. So all these people that are buy a bot and are holding the coins in their wallets, they need to sell. So what you do to make people sell, you drop the price down. You drop it below wherever their stop losses are, right? And usually they are in the lowest point here, somewhere there. So people put a lot of stop losses down here. There are a lot of stop losses up here, right on the line here. So if you drop the price all the way down to seven something, I'm not saying it's going to happen. A lot of things would be accomplished with that. CME futures gap would be closed. Uh, you would get all this uh, liquidity and uh, new people that push the price higher up. From this point on, push higher up. So that's my theory. That's, that's, that's the way I see it. Will it happen? I don't know. But in the really short term, it's re really hard to tell what's going to happen. Because the way I see it, I wouldn't take any action before the CME futures open again in... Uh, Four hours uh, and see how what the price is doing after that because it might look like that the pump here didn't break out of the big triangle it broke out of a smaller triangle and now just got back into the big triangle so we are still pretty bullish because we got some kind of bull flag and uh, if when CME futures opens up a few hours if you go above this line again I'm going to be really bullish uh, at least up to 14,200 or something like that. And if it goes down, well, you just saw what I told you, like 7,005. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but you know, it would be nice. And then we can go to the moon. No, yeah, no way we're going to go down to 75. I'm thinking 11 too. And in the next video, I'm going to probably show you why I'm going to thinking like uh, next time it's going to be like around 11,000 something. Yeah, I have I have a theory where we're gonna go and like 11,000 something there. I think. We're gonna go. Okay, that's video for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you like the new colors. Bye bye.